Hi folks and welcome to another Sunday morning Simo Flange. Oh boy, I hope I had it on the right mic the last time. I think I did. This time I started off and I noticed it was on the wrong mic. I hope I knew that from last week, but we'll see. Um, I talked about, I uh, did top five war movies. I made a joke about documentary movies before quickly correcting myself and saying, I think I can do this. Um, I easily came up with five of them off the top of my head. I have not searched online, so there may be other ones out there, but here's the deal. <clears throat> Usually the ones that I can remember should be my favorite. Every once in a while when I do a search for documentaries, I find maybe one that should be at number four or five. So I can be wrong. I do like watching documentaries. I've seen tons of documentaries. I like a bunch of them. In fact, there's one right now that I just thought about. Let me think about this. Um, in fact, I don't remember what it's called. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Yep, that one. Oh. Oh. That will have to be an honorable mention. Mm. That will be the honorable mention. Yeah, yeah, I am going to put one in there. So never mind, never mind. So now I have an honorable mention. Wow. Never. Okay, so this one's an honorable mention. I'm going to start with an honorable mention now. That was number five. But I'm booting it down. It's Kim Burns. Kim Burns, man, you think documentaries. You should be thinking Kim Burns, I think. He does a lot of excellent documentaries. There's more than one Kim Burns documentary on my list here. But uh, one that I've enjoyed, but I've only seen once, is the one on the Civil War. Uh, I, I, it, and that, that's what got me started on uh, the Civil War history and stuff like that, and reading the books and stuff like that, and learning about the era, was Ken Burns' documentary. <clears throat> Plus, my dad was very interested. Uh, it still is an interesting in history, but that kind of just brought it home for me, the way Ken Burns you know, um, does his documentary style. And I was like, dude, I'm in. I'm in. So I uh, was all about it. And uh, I, But I'm going to make this an honorable mention because I found, I think I know one that would fit. And you know what? I think I would put that one up a little bit higher now. The one I just remembered right here on the podcast. Um, this is one that I, I, I thought about this. Should I wait for Benjamin? I don't think Benjamin watches documentaries. Now, it could be wrong. could be wrong. I'm going to ask him when he comes in. He's going to be coming in recording some, too. I'm just trying to get a bunch recorded in time because I'm gone for two weeks and uh, won't be doing any recording, so I'm trying to get ahead on both of my podcasts here. But uh, e either way, though, he may be watching documentaries. I don't think he would, and I don't know how much crossover. I, I don't think I'd have any crossover with someone with documentaries. Uh, if, if no one watches documentaries, there is a documentary out there for you. There's one about there's one about everything you can imagine right now, and cool subjects, too. Oh, dang it. Oh, no. Egad. I thought of another one. Oh, no. Oh, no. I have totally have screwed this up now because now that I'm saying that, when I just said there's, there's a documentary for everyone, I was about to give, oh my goodness, I can't remember the name of it. What's it called? It is called, oh my Lanta. Okay, so now... <laughs> Now I thought about two other ones, <coughs> two other documentaries that, uh, oh no, and there's another one. Hold on. Uh, what's it called? I have to look it up because I remember what it was about. Um, oh, dang it. So that one too. Holy cow. Okay, so now I totally got to restructure this. Let me think. I am, oh, where's a pen and pad? Oh, my Lanta. Last minute, doing some last minute. This is why I need a co-host. I got to do some last minute um, prep here for this. So hold on just one moment, station break. All right, I'm back. And uh, there is way too many to count here. <laughs> wow. Um, because I, I, I kept thinking of these off the top of my head, and then I kept writing more down, and ideas kept spilling. And I swear, I thought about this the whole day. <clears throat> Obviously, not good enough, because as I was talking, these just kept came popping into me, and there's probably a lot more, but I'm going to stop here. Well, how many do I have now? Besides the ones I haven't named, I named one, two, three, four, five, six, seven more. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so 
I'm trying to shift through all of the honorable mentions and what would be my top. I still think my number one counts. I still think my number five counts. Oh my gosh, I don't know. All right, so here we go. Uh, I'll go honorable mentions here. I'm a big baseball fan, okay? Uh, Nolan. is Nolan Ryan's documentary. It's excellent. It's excellent. It's worth watching. It's him as a young kid uh, talking about his history, how the great one of the greatest baseball players ever didn't think he was going to play past his first major league year. In fact, he was going to you know, roll off the team, become a cattle farmer. And it's an amazing story about how he came to be who he is now and what he does now. And it's the whole thing is just incredible, incredible to watch. I love any baseball documentary I will watch. I will always watch. Doesn't mean I enjoy them all. <clears throat> Another baseball documentary. And there's a lot of there's a lot of decent ones out there. Um, the one which one did I see that I was kind of disappointed on? Reggie Jackson's. I think it was Reggie Jackson. I was really excited to see this and thought it was a little bit of a letdown. Um, but uh, another one that I really did love, baseball-wise, Knuckleball. Uh, I think I think non-baseball fans would still love this, too. The Knuckleball is a super rare pitch uh, that I don't think there is a major league player right now that's pitching the Knuckleball right now. And it's a unique pitch. It, it's hard to control, but if you can control the Knuckleball, you're, you've got a long career, a successful career, usually, in Major League Baseball. And they talk about how there's really only one knuckleballer left at, that, at the time of the video. Now there's none. Uh, but the thing is, though, the kind of history of the knuckleball, how all of these pitchers throughout the years take care of one another, meaning at, at the time, uh, this knuckleballer who they're focusing on, he is the last one of his breed, yet all of the retired knuckleballers call him after every game. They watch his games. They give him <coughs> you know, <coughs> help. Uh, sometimes they've flown out <coughs> to wherever he is to kind of help him out, help him out on working on pitch. But all the knuckleballs work together to help each other out because it's such a rare pitch to do. It's, fan it's a fantastic documentary, and I cannot suggest it enough. Um, that's all that I'm going to name for right now. Uh, other ones, uh, people are going to get mad. I don't care. But what is a woman is worth watching. It's it's hilarious. On top of that, because it is kind of funny that there's a topic about this now, and uh, but it is worth watching. Uh, it, it streamed for free on Twitter or something for a while. It was a big deal about it. I got to watch it. Um, I, I I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I don't I don't really know. Matt Walsh. I, I don't. I know he has his own podcast and stuff like that. I've seen a few other of his things since then. I think he's very funny. But um, that is a funny. That is a. I, I don't know if it's meant to be funny, but it's a documentary and it's very interesting. It's very good. I thought uh, another one. And I saw this in theaters. I could not remember the name. I saw it by accident, but it was in. It is Genesis history? It's a question mark. Now here's the thing. My wife and I went to the theater, and someone said, "Are you going to go see this?" I went, "No." And then I looked at her like, why? What? Because we were talking to her. We saw a few friends in the movie theater. And, you know, they were getting tickets, I guess, for that movie. And she went, oh, well, you were just talking to them. I thought you were with them. I said, okay. I said, what is that again? And she went, it's a documentary, a Christian documentary. I was like, and I turned to my wife. I said, do you want to? I can't remember what we were going to watch. She went, do you want to watch that instead? And she's like, okay. My wife just wants to eat popcorn. So I was like, yeah, okay, we'll watch it. And we watched it, and it was really good. It is Genesis history. I think it's... I think this is streaming for free on the website, on their website. I think they have the movie for free, and then you can buy it on DVD. And there's a bunch of uh, spinoffs I never saw. But what th almost threw me out of my chair is, while watching it, one of the people that they're talking to is a friend of mine. And I had no idea. Now, he's a friend of my dad's, really, but I know him, too. If I was to call him up, he'd definitely pick up the phone and say hello. Um, but... Uh, his name's Dr. George Grant, and he's 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 a great guy. Really, he wears bow ties, kind of weird. Looks a little nerdy, but really fun get fun dude. And a lot of my childhood, college, especially high school, was growing up around him, seeing him a lot, us joking all the time. In fact, it was I think I was in college. Yeah, I was in college when this happened. My favorite story with him. He was a speaker. He spoke. He still speaks a lot. But uh, and so that he was he's he's a um, um, what's it called an expert in a lot of things. That's why he was in the documentary. It was really good to see him because I hadn't seen him in years. And I think I called him after I saw. I said, "I just saw you in a movie. What?" He's like, "Yeah, how are you doing? How's your dad and everything?" 
But I was like, I can't believe you're in a movie, man. I thought it was great. And I said, I just got out of the movie theater. I was like, I know that guy. Everyone's like going, yeah, 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 whatever. I was like, no, I know him. That's, that's so, that was so cool for me. And uh, but I, 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 my favorite story with this dude. So he was a speaker. I, there was a talent. This is like one of those summer uh, Christian camps. If you went to those, you heard a lot of lectures, and then you know you, you hung out with a bunch of people who are Christians too. It's a lot of fun. I actually, honestly, my entire summers, the best part of my year, better than Christmas, was the week I got to go to the summer camp. I loved every minute of it. I loved every minute of it, and it was so much fun. Dude, I could... Oh, man. That's another one. I'm going to do top five memories of summer camp. Top five summer camp memories. That's a good one. You know what? Never mind. I'm not going to do summer camp memories. I'm just going to do summer camp memories. I'm going to put that on another podcast. Probably Prince of the Universe. I, I don't know what my top five would be. But I got tons of summer camp memory stories. Anyway. Uh, but one of my favorite ones. I won't tell this on Prince of the Universe then, since I'm telling it here. Uh, <laughs> so, it was the... We, they wanted to do a talent show. And maybe this is the first year or the second year we were doing the conference. I don't know. Anyway, no, it wasn't the first year. They decided to do a talent show on the last night. And um, I was not going to do anything. And I remember the the head guy of the whole conference came up to me and said, Matt, I want you to get. I want you to come into the talent show. I said, uh, Mr. Pete? I said, I, I, I'm not talented. He went, no, I want you to put down, I want you to do a comedy bit. I went, about what? He went, I don't care. Just do something funny. I said, well, isn't this going to be just like people playing music and stuff? He went, yes, and I hate that. He said, I want comedy in it too, so I'm going to put you in last, and you got to do something funny. I was like, no, okay. And he knew I was always goofing up on <clears throat> around campus and throughout the week. I was a, a, a fun, safe, practical joker. In fact, what I found out is none of my practical jokes ended up being a secret. They knew about my practical jokes, and they allowed them because they were harmless. Um, there's another great story with that later on, but I digress. Uh, anyway, so he wanted me to, and I didn't know what to do. And so I brought two of my best friends, um, Nate Wilson, who's an author now too, pretty popular guy, owns his own press now, uh, writes books, does TV shows. I mean, he's, he's a shaker, mover and a shaker. And, uh, shoot, I know the other guy, Isaac Rushton, who is a firefighter. Uh, I think he's a captain now in California, you know. Uh, so both of them had <laughs> better careers than I have. But uh, both those dudes I, I loved, like my own brothers. I say, hey, guys, we got to get together. We got to do something. And they said, what? I said, I don't know. He just said a comedy bit, but I don't know of anything that's funny. And I don't, you know, I can't think funny on the spot. And then we decided to come up with just something weird and stupid. And Braveheart well, had come out that year. So it was late 90s, I guess, when this happened. And uh, we said, well, let's do something. Let's paint our faces blue. You know, but not like not like half our face blue. Paint little you know emblems on our face and stuff. And I wanted to do that because I was a big uh, Team Seven fan from Wildstorm. There's a combo called Team Seven, and they had face paint on their eyes, and it, it would be like a spade or a lightning bolt or something like that. And so that's where I was secretly getting the idea. And but we got blue paint instead of red. And I had everyone, in a way, put their eyes like Team Seven because I just thought that was so cool. And of course, I had a spade. You know, because uh, uh, Alex Fairchild, who was uh, on Team 7, was my favorite member of Team 7 at the time. So I was super pumped that we, I was getting away with this. But we, they were thinking like, yeah, let's we'll, we'll quote lines from uh, uh, Braveheart. You know, come out there, quote a line from Braveheart and go off. And I thought, and then as I was thinking about it, I said, yeah, that's really dumb. But we were laughing about it. And then I thought, well, we need, I said, wouldn't it be great if we could get one of the speakers to paint his face half blue like Mel Gibson did in the movie and scream out freedom at the end. And we all started laughing. I said, who would do that? And I said, you know what? I said, Dr. Grant is a speaker here. I said, he is a good friend of mine. And they didn't believe me. And I was like, nah, man. Nah, man. He's good friends with my dad. I, you know, I, I knew him all through my high school years. I've known him through college. You know, he'll do it. He'll, I can talk him. He'll do it for me. He'll, I, I, let me talk to him. So I went up and talked to him, and he agreed to do it. Okay, he went, yeah, sure, Matt, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, that's fine. He he laughed and said, let's do it. And I thought, man, because it's not going to be funny unless a speaker comes out, because no one would expect a speaker to come out, paint his face blue, and scream out freedom. That's just ridiculous. And we were the last one. And this is recorded. This is recorded. If I can find those DVDs again, because I, re- I, I was on VHS, I think I converted all that to DVD. I, at least I hope I did. So it's I have it somewhere. I have it somewhere, hopefully, still. 
but uh, but we recorded it too, and it comes out, and you can't really hear us that well because we we can't we don't we don't say uh, we we don't we're speaking away from the camera, we're speaking to each other, so you can't really hear it. The camera's kind of far back, but I remember what my line was: "You dropped your rock," you know. And uh, I can't remember what the other lines were too, but we named some of our favorite lines, and we were doing that. And there you can see like a few giggles from the audience, the people who knew us, and like ha 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 ha, <laughs> they're quoting Braveheart. And then George Grant came out, half his face blue, and goes Frida! I mean, just really loud, and the crowd went nuts, went apps. I mean, the the everyone got up on their feet, standing ovation. The crowd had been asleep the entire time, and. We were going, we were pumped because when the when the, uh, the energy in the whole room, the stadium went up and we were just like, boom, like throwing our hands up like, yeah, come on, come on. You know, we were just ripped, man. And we were back in the back, high-fiving each other, so happy. And then George Grant comes out of the bathroom and he is pissed. And he goes, Matt. And I went, what? He went, this isn't coming off. And I went, what? He went, the blue face paint. It's not coming off. He said, I have to get on a plane and half my face is blue. I mean, he is furious because he thought I just got pranked by the prince of pranks, pranksters. He storms back into the bathroom. I'm panicking, and my two buddies, they think I pranked him and them. They said, dude, you totally pranked George Grant. And he said, and you totally pranked us. And they were laughing. They said, they're laughing. I said, dude, you got permanent face paint? I said, no, I didn't. I swear. And they're like, dude, that is so funny. Dude, I, I, he said, man, he said, I thought Matt's my good friend. He won't prank me. And you prank me on the last day. I said, guys, I am not pranking you. <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how much of a prankster title I had. But they thought, dang it, you got us too. And they're laughing about it, but he is not. And I, I remember this girl's name, Elizabeth. And I grabbed Elizabeth and said, Elizabeth, get nail polish remover. Get everything from your makeup kit and bring it here now. Makeup remover, nail polish remover, get and she went, okay. And so she's running away. Well, then I, I'm reading the bottle because like, surely I didn't get permanent face paint. And they said, you know, to, to wash off. It says, use warm water. And I went in back into the bathroom and he is furiously scrubbing his face. He is so angry at me. I said, I, I said Do Dr. Grant, Dr. Grant, I said, are you using warm water? He went, what? I said, it says use warm water. And so he turns on warm water and starts warm, and it starts coming off. He went, oh, it's coming off. He went, praise God. I mean, he is so relieved. And I was really, I was like, man, I've just lost a friendship over this. <clears throat> hilarious, hilarious. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that on Princeton Universe. I'm talking about, <laughs> oh, man, those are good stories. There's a lot of good stories to tell. But um, is, Gen is, is Genesis history is a really great documentary. <laughs> okay. All right. Am I still? No, I'm still on my uh, honorable mentions. Oh, my sweet Jesus. Do I have enough time for this? Yeah, I do. All right. Good thing it's just me today. Um, another one is Morgan, Morgan Spurlock's The Greatest Movie Ever Sold. Um, I remember, I think I rented this with my wife a long time ago. I said, do you want to watch this? It looks interesting. He did another documentary that's obviously going to be on my list right now. But I got this one, and this movie is, he's talking about how, you know, product placement in movies help sell movies. And how his whole movie right now, his documentary, was sold thanks to product placement. And it's really smart because he shows you how product placement can be put in movies very sl uh, slyly. In fact, while he's given an example, it actually turns out to be a commercial for Palm Wonderful. Exactly as he just talked in the documentary, he... Uh, we interviewed Palm Wonderful to see if they wanted to be a part of it. And they said, yes, but we want a good commercial within the movie. He said, absolutely. And so he's kind of showing the uh, you know viewers how that works. Well, how it works is he sold us a commercial. He actually did record a commercial for Palm Wonderful within the movie. And he keeps doing that and tricking us the whole time <coughs> and showing you how product placement has been there since the you know dawn of the ages to help you buy certain things you know and I mean things I knew about Reese's Pieces sold when E.T. Uh, showed them there and other things like Pepsi was really big on Home Alone but in Home Alone 2 Coca-Cola paid more so that's why they're drinking Coca-Cola products in Home Alone 2 and Pepsi products in Home Alone 1 but obviously Pepsi got the last laugh because they paid cheaper to get Home Alone 1 and uh, Coca-Cola paid out the wazoo for Home Alone 2 which wasn't as big still a blockbuster but not as big as 1 um, anyway definitely worth watching 
It is definitely worth watching. It's a really good one, too. All right. My other ones. And this was really hard. <clears throat> well, my other honorable mention, these are really hard because <clears throat> these, I believe, should be top five, but there's just too many good documentaries now. It's called Three Identical Strangers. I don't want to talk too much about this, but it's about triplets who never knew they existed. And then in one year or six months, by accident, the first two find out about each other. And then they eventually find the third one. But then there's more to the story. Like it starts peeling back one, you know, like there's these, all these coincidences between them. You know, how their families, how they were raised, what they did. But then you start realizing it's not a coincidence. And then something, something a little darker is going on. And it's so stinking good. Three identical strangers. <clears throat> I just don't want to ruin it for you because I think that, um, documentary is worth your time <clears throat> i mean it's just it's it's crazy it's crazy shoot maybe i should do a documentary week uh, at the beach um watch a bunch of documentaries all right so the other ones the other honorable mentions uh is going to be and this is really hard but i think it's going to be uh, da, 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 yeah insert coin insert coin is the rise and fall of arcades the rise of arcades when they were big how things like NBA Jam and um, uh, Street Fighter changed the world for arcades, and how arcades led and led the world in video games. That they were the pinnacle of video games until they saw the PlayStation. I think it was, and after they saw the PlayStation, the guy who was you know in charge of the biggest arcade manufacturer ever went, "That's it, boys. We're done." He knew that finally video game consoles had caught up to arcade technology and that arcades would be no more. And he immediately, like, <clears throat> after the release of the PlayStation, two more arcade games came out, but the industry went bankrupt overnight. You know, so the last one came out with big fanfare and really died. And, and like, immediately he knew our goose is cooked because now consoles have caught up with our technology. It's, it's really it's sad to watch, but it's really awesome to hear about and watch too. Um, because arcade, and they talk about secrets in arcade games you never knew existed and stuff. And it's just an, ama it's an amazing, amazing documentary. You have to see it, insert coin. All right, now do I have my top five? <coughs> One, two, three, four. Oh, that is my number five. Excuse me, number five is insert coin. Sorry, I lost count here. So there you go. Number five, insert coin. Uh, number four is, of course, Morgan Spurlock's Super Size Me. I love the first one where he eats McDonald's for 30 days. Yes, he is exaggerating it. Um, he does kind of embellish upon history uh, how the real world works. But everyone, you know, trying to get a point across kind of skews the information their way. Still, though, it's shocking because uh, in Super Size Me 2, which I watched just a few years ago, I still thought it was interesting. Even though a chicken farmer did tell me he embellished a lot in the in the uh, in the uh, documentary, but it's still and they're still both interesting documentaries uh, to have. Obviously, he's not going to do a three because he doesn't. He needs to have it. He said he spent a long time before he did two <clears throat> because. He didn't. He 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 saw. He didn't see a purpose on just repeating the same thing over and over again. And uh, so anyway, uh, but supersize me. Both of them, I think, are worth your time, and that's why they're number four. Number three is Rocket Fire. The Rocket Fire Explosion. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. The Rocket Fire Explosion is uh, the rise and fall, well, not the, ri the rise and fall of the Rock of Fire Explosion, which were the animatronics for Showbiz Pizza. Showbiz Pizza is still around today. They bought Chuck E. Cheese, and they had the, ri they had the rights to Chuck E. Cheese, but they wanted to go with the animatronics they grew up, that, that they already possessed. They just didn't have the rights to them. And <clears throat> they tried to get the rights from the guy, and he said, absolutely not thinking that they won't switch, you know, Chuck E. Cheese is a failing product. They have to go with their animatronics, right? No. 
They just got rid of all their animatronics, stopped doing business with him, and then went with Chuck E. Cheese because they had the rights to Chuck E. Cheese. And so Rocket Fire Explosion disappeared overnight, and it shows how he's the last person left in his factory of animatronic people. And it's basically just an empty factory now. He has maybe one or two at the time, <coughs> two full sets of Rocket Fire Explosion. He sells one of them, and then after this documentary came out, I think he sold the other one, um, and then finally shut down for good. But he would sell programming to the people who still had his Rocket Fire Explosion. And then it talks about a guy in some place in Alabama. He's still around, but Podunk, Alabama. He tried to he tried to you know relive the old pizza days. He opened up his own pizza place, but that closed. I think after the documentary, it says it closed, or later on you find it. It didn't stay open that long because he's in nowhere, Alabama, some small town in Alabama. But uh, he still has the Rocket Fire Explosion. He throw, threw them in a barn, an air-conditioned barn, where he throws birthday parties for kids and stuff. Uh, he's kind of a little weirdo. But uh, either way, I would love to go see the Rocket Fire Explosion again. And uh, the Rocket Fire Explosion, Showbiz Pizza is what I grew up as a kid. We didn't have Chuck E. Cheese or uh, Showbiz Pizza when I was a kid. But at my grandmother's house, we had Showbiz Pizza in one mobile. And up in Gaston, she had Chuck E. Cheese. We'd go to both, but... Uh, my grandmother down in Mobile took us to Showbiz Pizza more, so we were more Showbiz Pizza fans. Now, don't get me wrong. Back in the day, you, you said, Matt, you want to go Chuck E. Cheese? I got excited. But I enjoyed Showbiz Pizza a little bit more. So when I found out there was a documentary called Rock of Fire Explosion, which, by the way, it's amazing. It's an amazing uh, documentary to watch. Uh, so good. Worth it. Uh, in fact, I kind of want to watch. I want to watch all these again. All these I'd watch again. Number two... Without, now, by the way, there are documentary series that came out on TV, like Dark Side of the Ring, which I think is excellent, but I threw that out because I'm going for documentary movies. There's mockumentaries, which I almost included in here, but those are more like movies, like um, uh, Spinal. this is Spinal Tap and What We Do in the Shadows. Uh, both of those you should definitely watch. <coughs> they are both hilarious. And the oh, oh my gosh, the TV show to What We Do in the Shadows is still hilarious. But uh, my number two is Game Over, uh, The Rise and Fall of Atari. It is nuts. It is nuts to hear about. In fact, between that, Insert Coin's good, but Game Over, and it talks about how you know E.T. basically just ended their life. And it talks about filling the land. They're digging up the land, the proposed landfill to see if it's true. And, uh, spoiler, it is true. I mean, you know this because it's in the news. But they dug up all those E.T. cartridges. They just buried into the earth. Um, but wow, wow, wow. The whole time they're digging on the construction site, they're flashing back to the documentary of the rise of Atari and then how it all came across, how it all fell apart. And E.T., by, speaking of someone who lived during that time, when E.T. came out, we played it, I thought it was the worst piece of crap game I'd ever seen in my entire life. I'd ever, I thought it was just garbage. So, yeah, they killed the video game industry for a few years until Nintendo miraculously brought it back from the dead. But Game Over is so worth your time. Love that one. My number one, I have seen this documentary at least three times. I will watch it again. My brother just finished it. Baseball by Ken Burns. I told you Ken Burns is coming back. <clears throat> it's just called Baseball. Watch all nine innings and then the bottom and what the top and the bottom of the tenth inning. Those are two additional ones he did for the uh, uh, era of the 2000s. And he could do another one, to be honest. He could do another one, uh, uh, another one for the uh, case of the next decade. Each, each uh, video takes place in each decade. And it's so interesting. Honestly, I've watched it. I've watched this baseball at least three times. My brother's watching it right now. I sat down and watched an entire one from the uh, 80s with him. And I just love it. I love that documentary. Of course, I love baseball. But even if you don't love baseball... I, I, I promise you, I think I think Ken Burns makes a good enough video documentary to where you'll enjoy it. But honestly, I, I can't say any other documentary is better than this one because I've seen this one the most, and I would still watch it in a heartbeat. I would watch it again. I hope my son will watch it with me twice, three times over, you know, because every couple of years, I got to go back and see this again, at least every five years, I think. But Baseball, a documentary by Ken Burns, my number one, no doubt about it. Hey, folks. That's it. That's my top five documentaries. Thanks for coming along. This was actually more fun than I thought it would be. Um, I, I did a whole half hour by myself. Let me know in the chat. Do you watch documentaries? Do you like documentaries? What documentaries do you like? There's a. There's probably still more. 
documentaries that I've seen that I don't recall that I really loved and I've forgotten. Because if the documentary subject is interesting, I will give it a shot. Because I do enjoy documentary. And if it's baseball, I'll always watch it. I will always watch a baseball documentary. Um, but they're not all excellent. There's there's a, some honorable mentions here and there. Uh, Yogi, I saw It Ain't Over Till It's Over. That's a really good one. But not enough to be in my top five. But that was one that just recently came out or uh, came out about a month ago, I think. I saw it like a month or two ago. And that was a good one, too. Anyway, I could go on and on about documentaries. This is a lot of fun. But I will see you next time with Mr. Benjamin on Saturday morning, Samuel Flange.